What's going on, race fans? Welcome to Fisher's Virtual Gear Week, hosted by Ski Racing Magazine. Thank you for having us. Um, yeah, so anybody that's in the Zoom, we're recording this a little bit differently than the other sessions. Um, so for better audio quality and you know talking with us, Facebook might be the best place to check this out. You can just go over to Ski Racing Magazine's Facebook page. Uh, and you can ask us questions through just the comment section on Facebook and we'll be able to read them from here. Uh, we've got a great night planned for you guys. My name is Brian Landrigan. I'm the marketing director for Fisher in the U.S. And I'm joined by Tyler Thies, our uh, competition manager here in the U.S. How are you doing tonight, Tyler? Oh, I'm doing great. How are you, Lando? Doing great. Um, I think officially last night I got super excited for the ski season. I was only a little bit excited, but now with race night, I'm... I'm pumped up. How are you feeling for ski season? Oh, I'm super pumped. It's starting to get colder at night. It's starting to get that itch to go skiing. You know, it's been a hot summer and it's excited to go cool off and go skiing. Yeah, it's a little humid here in New England, but uh, yeah, those cold mornings let you know that ski season's almost here. Um, so some exciting news from Fisher. Uh, we've launched a new pole brand called One Way. Um, tonight, we're going to be giving away a pair of the One Way RD uh, Pro poles. Uh, we have both a slalom pole and a GS pole. You can see them here behind me. Um, really excited about the new One Way brand. It was a brand that existed on the Nordic side of the business for a really long time, and we've done a complete refresh um, and launched some great Alpine products here. And in addition to the poles, we have shin guards, pole guards, um, bags, and more accessories coming soon. So. Tell you guys a little bit about these new poles. Um, we have the RD16 GS Pro uh, that comes in at 380 grams and the RD16 SL Pro that comes in at 278 grams. Um, we're giving away one of these poles uh, to the best question of the night. Um, so feel free to add those questions and comments in. Um, it'll be your choice of the GS or slalom pole. So uh, looking forward to see who wins this great prize. Um, you know, these are real race shafts with a material called Cal Calu. Uh, Calu is a mix of aluminum and carbon, kind of how it sounds. So you get the strength of aluminum with the lightness of carbon. And yeah, really excited to see some athletes out on these new one-way poles and hopefully give away a pair tonight. And yeah, we had a, go ahead, Tyler. We had a bunch of athletes actually this summer testing them out and they're pumped to have them and try them out something a little different than the normal poles that are out there. For sure. Yeah. Love that blaze orange colorway. You can't miss these things on the hill. Um, yeah. So Tyler, let's uh, kick it off on the Fisher side of things. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're excited for with the skis this season. Yeah. So we're super excited to have the GS and slalom really finely tuned. Um, we have national international. So, uh, for the national level, we have two different stiffnesses, a soft and a medium and a stiff. And then international just comes in one stiffness. Um, recommend for, you know, first year FIS athletes who are a little lighter side on mm -hmm. the weight, uh, go more towards the medium. And then if you're, you know, a couple years in, getting stronger in the gym, graduate to that stiff ski. Awesome. And, and everybody out there, if you have any questions on the skis, poles, boots, whatever, feel free to throw those into the comment section. We'll answer them here at the end. Um, we've got some great interviews coming up. Um, Tyler, you caught up with Forrest a little bit earlier this week about um, her skiing, right? I did. I uh, was able to catch up with Forrest earlier this week and talk about some of the Fisher product and check in with her and what she's up to. Sweet. Let's uh, check that out now. We're here with Forrest Peterson. She was a ski racer for Fisher. And nowadays she is, what are you doing Forrest? What are you up to these days? Um, I'm coaching now. I'm coaching this women at Romark Ski Academy. Um, yeah, so I'm on the other side of things, uh, but still very much involved in the racing world. Um, but yeah, like you said, I used, I used to race myself. I Grew up skiing at Squaw Valley. I, um, I made the national team at 16 and um, was on, on the national team for a few years before I went to Dartmouth and skied all four years 
for Dartmouth. And then my last two years of racing, I was with the um, all female team, Team X Alpine. Um, and now I'm going into my second year of coaching. So kind of come full circle here and still really enjoying being in the racing scene. Awesome. Just wanted to ask a few questions. Uh, what made you come over to Fisher and ski on Fisher? How long have you been skiing on Fisher? Gosh, I've been skiing on Fisher pretty much as long as I can remember. Um, yeah, really, since I've, I've been pretty young, the ski has just always worked for me. Um, as a racer, I found that the Fisher ski was by far the most stable and powerful feeling ski for me. And I, I love that feeling to just be able to power the ski and knowing that it would hold for me no matter the conditions, no matter the body position that I would get myself into. Um, Fisher, it, it's just like, to me, it felt like the most solid ski. And I, I did test other brands um, and none really compared in that way. So yeah, Fisher's, Fisher's really stood by me as a as a ski racer through and through, and still as as I you know move on from the competitive side, um, yeah, I it just I love how solid how solid the ski feels all the way around. Cool. Um, what are you looking forward to for this season? Is there certain athletes you're you know watching out there, and have you seen? You've been on a bunch of projects with a bunch of women specific court groups this summer um is there any hot young young guns that are coming up yeah definitely i think it'll be really exciting this year especially because um the norams will be back um it's, it'll be almost two years um since norams have been happening um i think the, the last one was february of 2019 and so it's been a full year to um full year since, you know, all of that. So I think there's going to be a lot of movement, um, a lot of up and coming skiers um, that'll really show themselves on the Noram circuit um, for Fisher athletes in particular. And on the girls side, um, Ali Resnick is definitely going to be one to watch. Um, and um, as well as um, the Moritz twins, Shirsty and Lee Moritz. They're both some really fast up and coming um, girls that, that, that rip. And I've, I actually got to work with both of them at a national development group project last, last year in Copper. And uh, I can only imagine they've, they've come that much farther since then. So yeah, definitely keep your eyes out for those girls. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll be on the Noram tour. And I think, they'll be competitive for sure. And, and Allie, I think it'll be really cool because she's juggling the national team as well as racing for Dartmouth. Um, so, you know, she's going to be on multiple circuits and definitely I think she'll be at the top. Her technique is super solid. And um, I think this is her second or third year on the national team now. So she's, um, you know, I'm just getting into her, into her stride. So it'll be exciting to watch those girls for sure. Yeah, definitely. Those girls have looked like they've been ripping. They've been training hard this this spring and summer. So excited for that. Um, thanks for joining us, Forrest. And uh, can't wait to get on snow here soon. Thanks, Tyler. I'm looking forward to it, too. Awesome, Tyler. Thanks for catching up with Forrest. Um, so yeah, what goes into finding the right size ski, slalom ski, GS ski um, for some of the younger athletes out there? Can you tell us a little bit about what goes into that. Yeah, so we, there is kind of a baseline for that, uh, for slalom, uh, chin the nose height um, is usually the common you know, baseline. And then for GS, uh, 15 to 20 centimeters above that. Um, but obviously it based off of your ability and size and whatnot. So definitely talk to your coach. Your coach sees your scheme all year round and really kind of use that resource you have to get your correct sizing. Mm -hmm. And for some of the athletes that are, you know, beyond the junior programs, we had a question from Dave Smith. Um, he's asking which one of the national or international versions would you recommend for ripping on groomers? 
Ooh, is it, is it an athlete or whatnot, or what's what's is there um, any other specifics, or just in general? Yeah, Dave, maybe you could clarify there, and we can answer your question a little bit more in depth. Um, yeah, as I said, we're live here. So anybody else that has questions too on, on gear selection, feel free to throw those in now. Um, we'll jump into boots here in a little bit, but we can always go back and answer ski questions for you all too. Um, yeah, we we're talking a lot with like the, the junior racers, but um, as far as our collection, what are the, about those guys in, in beer leagues? What kind of ski would you recommend for them? Um, we do make like a master's, you know, cheater ski, but you know, it's, 27, 25 meters. Um, it's perfect for kind of those tighter GSs that are set for beer league. But, you know, if they're super strong. Being on a fist, women's ski is, is good too if you're able to run it out and make the course. Yeah, that'd probably be a good option for someone trying to ski groomers but not ski uh, competitively. What model is that, Tyler? Uh, it's a Fisher Junior Fist GS ski. Uh, comes okay. in 183 and 188. Uh, 183 is a 25 meter and 188 is a 27 meter. Awesome. Uh, any other high level details you want to give on skis before we switch over and talk about the new boot? Uh, yeah. Uh, again, this year we have the MO plate. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see here, it's a uh, single plate, not split at all. It's just single, but has a floating toe. And the benefit of that floating toe is that it, you're not connect, you're not uh, stuck down in the toe is all the connection points are under the foot. So it gives you a lot more ability to control the ski and power transfer transfer. Um, it allows the ski to actually flex in the natural state it was made. So we're really excited about this plate. Uh, this was new last year mm -hmm. and we kept it for this year. So we're super excited about that. How has the feedback been from uh, the athletes that you've been working on on the new plate? It's been awesome. Um, we do a lot of development from the top down. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our athletes, you know, develop the skis and the plates and everything. And then it comes down uh, once it's cleared and gets proven, mm -hmm. comes to everyone else. And we're super excited to have it for everyone else now. Awesome. Yeah. It's a great part about Fisher. Um, you'll hear from our athletes later on, but we definitely don't dummy down any of our gear that goes down to the athletes uh, racing here domestically or, or in any program that you, you know, skis that you buy in shops, you're, you're getting the same stuff that our World Cup athletes are on. Yeah, it's it's super cool. And definitely, I think this is a good segment into, you know, talking with Kristoff because one of the things that we're most excited about is this new boot. Yeah. Um, before we move on to boots, we did have a good question come across. Um, I'll just read it verbatim here. It's from uh, Lila. She says, my son loves racing Fisher. He's 13, and this will be his third season racing on Fisher. Awesome. Thanks. Um, however, he's a taller boy. Uh, we find that 150 slalom is short for him. It's a bit under his chin, uh, but he's not ready to move up to the 155 fist ski. Any suggestions or anything to maybe give him that confidence to go up to the 155? Yeah, so um, definitely, you know, don't want to get too much ski that you can't handle. Right. Um, having it too short is going to be fine and just be able to overpower it a little bit. But in the most, like most likely being too short is better than being too long and not being able to make the turn. Great. Yeah. If you uh, need any more details, um, feel free to throw those in the chat, but uh, yeah, let's switch over and talk about the new podium RD boot. I had a chance earlier in the week to uh, catch up with Christoph Lentz, our international boot product manager, and he's going to tell us more about the Podium RD boot. Um, and we'll be back live in about 10 minutes. So if you have any questions about the boot um, while you're watching the video with Christoph, throw those in there. Tyler and I will do our best to answer those. If you have any more ski questions as well, um, keep throwing those into the chat or the Zoom. And here's Christoph. We got Christoph Lentz here, our international Alpine boot product manager. What's going on, Christoph? Hey, Lando. How's it going? Great. What do you got? Uh, where are you at today? I'm hanging out in our tech in the Fisher Technology Center here in Montebelluna, Italy, uh, just north of Venice, kind of in the ski boot mecca of the of the actual entire world. Great. Well, our U.S. racing fans are super excited to hear about uh, the new Podium RD boot. What can you tell us about it? Jump right into it. We've got the 
Podium RD family, which uh, has been seen in select instances on the World Cup, a uh, few guys testing for the past few years, but we're, we're finally bringing this to market, uh, the RD20 boot. Um, most visible change we got going on here is the new cuff. So this is a completely redesigned cuff that features new canting. So this is a, a low tolerance race canting, um, much smaller holes in the, in the shell, so a lot less negative space, reducing the tolerance and making for an all around more direct, precise power transfer. So this has come on really well with our athletes. Um, this also, we've closed the gap in the back with the redesigned cuff. So there's no longer kind of the floating space between the, the lower shell and the cuff. Um, we found this provides a lot more stability to the rear um, and gives you really a solid support to stand behind in those tough race conditions. One thing else we managed to achieve with this new cuff was we opened up a few more millimeters of space between the instep buckle and the lower uh, arm or wing of the cuff, which was, especially on the smaller sizes in the past, a bit of a limiting factor because it would bind. Um, so with this, we've achieved a really nice progressive flex without getting hung up or needing any additional work in that sense. Um, yeah, a few other things we've got going on here. Um, we've got the Fatmax 55 millimeter power strap that uh, we've got mounted on all the Podium RD models, the 110, the 130, and the 150. Uh, what's cool about this strap is we've got a Velcro shin. So it comes standard mounted with a one millimeter uh, Vel Velcro shim, but in the box you'll find a three millimeter shim. Uh, this can just easily be fixed to the strap and it'll give you that perfect closure between the tongue of your liner and, and the shell as needed. If you're not into it, you can just take it off, um, no problem. What else we got here? Um, another big improvement on the RD20 for this season is completely redesigned RD20 buckles. So this is a new matrix we've got going on the buckle construction. They sit very nicely, they stay closed, and importantly, they don't break with impact to the gates. Um, is, as a spare part, we've also got an auto lock buckle. So for the cuff buckles, we've got the self-locking buckles that have an extra hinge spring that needs to be opened. Um, really popular with our slalom racers who are constantly getting that impact here and don't want any risk of that buckle opening. All the Podium RD models have our podium leather race liner. This is a high quality, slim fitting race liner with leather in the body of it, filled with viscous cork pockets to, for that perfect ankle and heel hold. Uh, we've got a flexible toe box, allow those toesies to move. And uh, it's got an adjustable uh, tongue so we can reposition that. Of course, laces and removable Velcro spoiler for those of you that like to get a little more forward. Uh, in addition to all those kind of standard features, new for this season, we made the liner one half size longer. Um, we got the feedback from our, from our race community that the liner was a little short in previous podium versions, so it led to a little bit of sliding, especially if you grind out the toe box or put a punch in it, as we know a lot of people do, you have even more room in that shell. So we've compensated for that with a slightly longer liner. Um, not noticeable, but except for the fact that the liner won't slide in the shell anymore. So that's been also really well received. Uh, in addition to all those tech changes, uh, we've got a fresh new design. So standard Fisher yellow, of course, but we have accented with racing blue on the buckles and the logos and the strap. Uh, jumping back real quick to the canting. Uh, I mentioned that we have the new low tolerance race canting. Uh, standard mounted on the boots, we've got the one point canting or the neutral canting. So that's installed uh, medially and laterally 
on all boots. But as a spare parts item, we have a whole set with two and three point cantings that allow you to cant the cuff as needed um, and works very similar to our old race canting, the black, gray, and red pieces. We've just really reduced the size, made it out of aluminum, uh, really to make sure we give the athletes the maximum power transfer. What we got going next, uh, we've got a design update on the known Podium 70 and 90 junior race boots. So these follow the same design language as what we've got going on on the adult World Cup race boots. Um, Racing Blue, refresh these up. So these are available in Flex 70 and 90 for those smaller kids. Um, yeah, I mean, we had a uh, maybe a tough season last year. I think the whole world had a tough year. But um, me, as a personal race fan, I'm really stoked about what we've got going on here. I think if you look at uh, U.S. Nationals, Tobias Kogla uh, had, a, had a smashing performance there. We've got Cassidy Gray coming up through the Norams, Europa Cups, World Cup scene. Uh, Stefan Brennsteiner had some huge moments of brilliance last year. I think there's a lot of potential and we're super optimistic and eager to get started with this winter. Um, and really, I think combined with the RC4 race skis of the World Cup and the junior variant and the, the free flex binding and then the various plate offerings, I think we really have a winning package here that uh, yeah, we're, we're stoked to see going fast this year. And let the folks back in the U.S. know a little bit more about your background and uh, how you got into your position. Yeah, um, I've been with Fisher for a few years now in Europe, but I'm originally from Park City, Europe. Park City, Utah, excuse me. <laughs> um, yeah, you might hear that I, I don't speak with the typical German-Austrian accent, um, but yeah, I'm a... Uh, German-American, uh, grew up in Park City, Utah, skiing for Park City Ski Team. Uh, did a few postgraduate years there before going to the East Coast to Williams College uh, and racing uh, the NCAA circuit there for four years as an ETH um, for all those folks out there. So yeah, great experience. Uh, I bleed black and yellow and uh, been really fortunate to, to land here in Europe. Um, and so, yeah, really up to my eyeballs in ski boots these days and I'm loving it. How has your experience as a ski racer uh, helped you in your job as our global boot uh, product manager? Uh, there's, there's certain nuances when it comes to racing uh, that any racer will know. A lot of it may be placebo effects or whatnot, but I mean, uh, the material needs to fit, and I think attention to detail is so crucial. Um, and it's been really cool to see our, our race R&D department, how in love with little details they are, whether it's the angle on a buckle or how tight that spring is tensioned, down to design elements, um, liner, where we position seams, what kind of material. Um, there's just so many tiny little details that go into uh, something like this, which is why it takes so many years to develop and perfect. But I think we've really nailed it here. And I guess, yeah, I, I, I can speak the language and have a little bit of credibility with some of the old experienced race guys who have been around the World Cup for years. Um, despite never having reached that level myself, I can at least speak the language and understand that it does matter and that you don't want your liner sliding around in the boot. And some people might see that as just an annoying problem for the fewest of people, but it's things like that that we really hone in and want to want to improve on and continue to to push the whole Fisher Race family to new levels. Awesome, Christoph. Well, thanks for showing us a little bit inside the uh, boot development office, and thanks so much for your time and insight. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's fun working with Christoph now over in Austria, but you guys spent quite a, quite a couple summers uh, up on Mount Hood, right? Yeah, no, it's super cool to hear you talk to him and having his background, you know, it's, it's super cool to have that in Austria. You know, there's a lot of stuff that is U.S. specific and especially for race, it's nice to have our voice heard over there in Austria and really fine tune the stuff, the product. So I'm super excited about that. 
Yeah, absolutely. We've got a super close relationship with headquarters over in uh, Reed, Austria, and and yeah, just makes our bond even even tighter with Christoph over there now. So super fortunate to have him. He is the boot expert. Um, we have some boot questions that came across. Tyler will do his, his best to answer them. And uh, yeah, you ready for some questions, Tyler? Oh, for sure. Let's, let's hear them. An easy one off the bat for you. David Kent asked, what are the boot lasts? Uh, it's a 93 race last. So it's the typical race fit for the 110, 130, 150. And then for the 90 and 70, it's a little more generous. Uh, 96 or 97. I can't, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's around that. Nice. So it's, yeah, correct. Right in that range. Yeah. So it's a little more generous for that younger kid to move out the toesies, as yep. Chris Huff would say. <laughs> Uh, I think this question is referring to the stance of the boots. It's from David Ger Gehring. Uh, he asked, does the foot face 100% forward? Uh, yeah, so uh, people probably know about our past, about Somatech. Uh, mm -hmm. we've, we've moved away from the Somatech idea. It worked for some, but a lot of people did not like it either. Um, so we have, our boots are straight. So, you know, people usually say, Oh, do you have the straight boot? Blah blah. All our <laughs> boots are straight. Um, coming out of the mold, if you get a lang, get a rosy, get a head, everything comes a little bit, you know, coming out of the mold, but mm -hmm. they're straight. So they're same as other companies with not having that stance anymore. Awesome. Thanks for the info. Um, one of the other brands yesterday mentioned that they have a lot of World Cup racers that are no longer going super tight on their boots. What is your feeling on this? Uh, yeah. So, you know, you want that tight fit, but you don't want it to be, you know, over the top. You know, you don't, if you lose circulation, you lose your, your feeling to the ski, to the boot. Um, definitely been hearing that too. Uh, mm -hmm. More, it's, you know, preference and also, you know, how the person feels in the boot. You know, when we shell size someone, you know, you feel the front of the boot when you're sitting down. And then when you flex forward, have your toes come back a little bit, have a little bit of room. And that's kind of the perfect fit. Cool. One last question on boots. And then we had a couple more come across on skis. Um, in reference to what Christoph was talking about with the new strap, how does that compare with like a booster strap? Uh, so it's a little bit different from booster strap because uh, the booster straps going to flex a little bit. Um, it's more soft here. This is just like a single strap. Um, this is pretty responsive. The booster straps, you know, patented to be a little bit flexible. So you kind of get that slingshot effect. So it doesn't have the flexibility as a booster strap, but this has been designed in the race room and a lot of racers are using this strap. Uh, I personally, when I race, use this strap because it held down nicely to the boot. Um, I like to have that ability to just tip it over, not that play. There's some play in the booster sometimes, and I found that I like to have all control. So I used the regular fast strap. Awesome. Um, okay, a couple questions came back on... Skis. Um, ba, 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 ba. Ryan Harrell asks, can you speak a bit about multi-event skis versus slalom or GS specific skis? And he's asking the, about this for U12 racers. Yeah. So we have a, it's called the RC All Ride. And it's, you know, multi-event ski. It's going to, you want to size it to top of the head. Um, you don't want to go as short as a slalom, but you don't want to go as big as a GS. So it's kind of that in between. Uh, it's great if you want to have one ski for everything, but if you really want to take it to the next level and really have high performance, having a specific slalom ski and GS ski is super beneficiary. I, I think it's well worth the investment, but if you want to go with that one ski, we have that, have that ski as well. Great. Um, kind of last chance for questions here, guys. We're going to check in with our athletes over in Switzerland in just a little bit. We've got one more question to answer here. Um, then when we get back from checking in with the athletes, we'll announce the winner of the uh, RD16 uh, GS or slalom pole from one way. 
Um, but yeah, Dave had a follow-up question. We were talking to him earlier about, you recommended maybe the junior race skis being mm -hmm. an option. Would you recommend those for a heavier skier? Uh, no, I, there's, there's another ski that we make that is, you know, more of a, a master ski as well. Yeah. Um, that's okay. going to be a little wider of a platform. I know some of the masters racers don't like that. Um, it's kind of just based off of, you know, what you feel, but that's going to be stiffer. So that's going to be a lot more stiffer for those kind of uh, bigger guys. Great. Uh, well, yeah, let's check in with Bryce Bennett, uh, Steven Nyman and Sam Morse who are over training in Zermatt right now. Go. We're somewhere in Europe. We gotta kill Ski racing. I'm Steven Nyman. I'm Sam Morris. I'm Bryce Bennett. And we are here to talk to you about Fisher's new skis coming up this year. Super fired up on what we got. What do you like, Sam, your boy? I really appreciate the throwback colors and speed skis. Back to Fisher's traditional roots. Um, in terms of construction wise, they got a lot of fun stuff coming out. I don't know how much we can give away, uh, but they're fast. They're fast. We're skiing well. No, we, they, they made some adjustments to the speed skis this season, and we've been testing it now for almost a year, and I think it's, it's coming along. And Fisher is one of those companies, I mean, you could say I get paid to say this, but the, the quality. The, we had dinner last night with our service man and we were talking about it. The quality of ski that you receive from Fisher. And yes, he uses his hands like this. My Italian service man. <laughs> but just the quality that you get from Fisher is not like other brands, I would say. Like, the speed skis that we ski on are the same skis that you get in the store. And same with the GS skis and slalom skis. I wouldn't know much about the slalom skis because I have zero days on them. <laughs> I think they get better ones in the store than we get. <laughs> very true, very true. Yeah, but definitely to reiterate Bryce's point, I know talking to a lot of club coaches and stuff back home, um, that they've always found Fisher to be of like the highest quality just right off the floor, right out of the package. And it's pretty cool to have a company that gives that kind of level of attention and focus all the way down the levels. Handmade. They're, um, Australia. they're proud of what they do. It's not about making the money, it's about making fast skis. And we like what we get. And and the boots as well. The boots have made some adjustments. They made some adjustments with the boots. Um, and I think they're moving in a good direction. And for the younger kids as well, they're it's a solid boot. I think a big change too is this new binding. Um, the toe is quite aggressive. It, it really responds well. It makes the ski going quicker. Um, we tend to use it on the. Uh, GS and slalom skis, even though we're not skiing much slalom, but that's what most people are liking about it, um, is its responsiveness and, and uh, aggressiveness, which is kind of the name of the game in tech right now. But speed-wise, the new skis are burly, tough, strong, um, fast, and Sam, Steven, and Bryce signing out. Good luck this year. Go fast. Hammer down. <laughs> Always great to catch up with those guys. Looks like they're having some fun over in uh, Switzerland. Yeah, it's super cool to see Steve, too, coming back from injury. And we're super excited to see all those guys do really well in the World Cup this year. Yeah, World Cup, and we got an Olympic here, too. Can't wait to see those guys over yeah. in Beijing. Going for gold. Yeah, it's going to be a super fun year to watch. And, yeah. Um, so we'll be wrapping up here pretty soon. If there are any last questions, feel free to throw those in here now. Um, we'll monitor the live video or the recorded video afterwards on Ski Racing Magazine's page. So if you do have questions and you weren't watching this live, feel free to throw them in the comment section down below and um, someone from Fisher will check in and then do our best to answer your questions. Any uh, closing thoughts from you, Tyler? No, just really excited with what Fisher has to offer this year for racers. Uh, 
definitely what you heard from from athletes themselves. You know, it's it's cool. We're super excited, especially for the new boot. Um, skis are running really well, and I think we're going to have some good success in the World Cup, and even for the junior athletes, it's going to have some great success. So super excited to be watching a live timing and watching all the Fisher athletes and how they do this year. Yeah, can't wait to get out there with you this year and you know check out some of those NORAM races and, and travel around and see some of our great athletes across the country. Um, and yeah, for all of you that are interested in Fisher, thank you for tuning in. As I said, we're here to answer all your questions. Um, Tyler is a great resource for the racers here in the U.S. And then we've got Dave Nyan on the East Coast. Um, so yeah, we'd uh, we'd love to talk to racers about getting you on Fisher, and and we're here to answer any of your questions. So without further ado, we'll announce the winner of the one-way polls. Um, tonight, it's going to be Lila Sivey. Thanks so much for interacting with us and all your great comments. Woo! Um, Ski Racing Magazine will be in touch with you, and you can let us know if you'd like the slalom or the GS poll, uh, and we'll get the right size and everything for you. And, and yeah, great to have another athlete out on one-way this season. Um, Cool. Well, thanks so much to everyone for joining. Um, signing out here from our U.S. headquarters, uh, Tyler. Yeah, thanks for joining me tonight, Tyler. <laughs> Thank you, Lando. Great. All right, we'll see everybody out there on the, the slopes this season.